God is good. All the time. And all the time. Amen, my friends, and amen. A few announcements for you, you can find on the uh, screen behind me or in your programs as well. First of all, if you're guest today, we'd love for you to fill out one of our guest cards. On the opposite side of that guest card is our prayer card, where we pray for each other. You can find those prayer requests. Uh, let me rephrase that. If it's a private prayer request, um, make sure you note that and drop it off in the offering plate. If it's public, we pray for each other, as you can find inside your programs. But make sure you drop those off in the offering plate at that time of the service. There's youth group tonight at 6.30 p.m. here at the church where it's Olympic themed. Meanwhile, Marvelous Mondays, our kids programming for three-year-olds-ish through sixth grade is tomorrow night. Dinner served at 5.15. We've had 30-some kids. It's been a great showing in time so far. Craft group is meeting also tomorrow night. Make sure you sign up for this event. Uh, because there are limited supply details, of course, in your programs if you're interested. And the sign-up sheet is downstairs in the hallway near the ladies' restroom. On the opposite side of the hall, though, from the ladies' restroom. You'll also find pie sale order forms in your programs today. If you are interested in buying such pies, go for it. They're in there, and part of the proceeds, if not all the proceeds, will go to the healthy remote backpack program here in the Mercer area. Kids program for our um, Easter program. Kids program, did I really say it that way? Our practice for the kids program, is how I should say it, occurs during the Sunday school hour. If you heard them singing earlier this morning, that's because they were practicing for our March 11th performance. That's coming, so if your youngster is interested, come on in for that time period. Meanwhile, um, the cantata practices are Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. They follow our praise team practice here at the church at 6.30. Cantata practice 7 p.m. Wednesday nights. If you're interested in Right Now Media, it's a free online resource with streaming videos, kids programming, and whatnot from a faith perspective. Contact us in the church office for that password to be able to use um, those items. They're free to you. Growth groups are carrying on right now. And so if you're interested, Tuesdays, nights, Wednesday mornings, Thursday afternoon, and Thursday evening, evening and evening, are meeting at different spots, as you can see that in the back screen. Uh, it's a great time to get to know folks and to talk through some issues of our faith, as well as making sure we can encourage one another. So those times are back there. Just contact us if you're interested. And there are a lot of folks to thank this morning. First of all, I want to make sure that we thank Sue Vernon and Ross Vernon, Jim Harper and Pat Grundy for helping decorate the uh, sanctuary and the outside. Thank you so much. Secondly, we also want to thank um, the folks who are on our counting teams, where that's Jim and Sheree Dibler and Brad and Bonnie Bridges and Cindy Green, June, Escabel and Kale Fifty and Steve Meads are another group, Sue Vernon and Denise Orr, and then Linda Meads and Laverne Newton. These folks give up an hour, sometimes an hour, sometimes less, and some days it's a lot more of a headache, to be honest. And, and making sure that they are tracking all the giving on a Sunday morning so it doesn't just sit around. Um, these folks give up of their time to help us as a church and to serve Jesus Christ. If that's something you're interested in, contact Sue Vernon or contact us in the church office if you're interested in serving in that way. And we also want to make sure we say thank you to Donna Lazaroff. She's not here this morning. But Donna has, for decades, served on the counting team, and she has decided it's time for her to step down and retire. So if you see Donna, make sure you thank her, and when she's here on Sunday, we'll make sure we recognize her appropriately without maybe too much in the way of making her embarrassed. We'll see. Y'all think like I run around trying to embarrass people by that reaction. <laughs> well, friends, why don't we greet one another with the light of Christ? I prove it. Don't the Did you see the guy? Did you see the guy? Did you see the 
actually put the credit on it, and I'm going to do your prime position for the credit on it. Two lines. Two lines. Poor boys. All right. Poor Benjamin Harris. We don't. Watch. Go. Y'all just, we're going to add a song. I realized I hadn't done it. How are you today? No, no, I'm not a whole song. Pardon me. Uh, Good morning. Two that are not in there. I kill? Well, two in our hymnal. Okay. I don't know if it's two on that. I sometimes it's two on that. Okay. Really, 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 really. Exactly. Something else. I don't play with this enough to be able to do it. Or you could do it. I don't know. It's kind of snow here. here, kids here, although I love this note, we had some slash all great kids tonight. Some great kids or all great kids, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Since I wasn't there, I don't know. But thank you to um, those helpers who are here, Shelly Diver, Dale Boyd, Denise Orr, Kathy Glenn, Jamie Segula, Megan Reed, Zaley King, Carrie Van Wert, especially to Shari and Kathy for the food and drinks. And, um, and a big thank you to Connor Shell, who did a great yeah. job helping clean one up. On, yeah. He's um, one of our kids. Friends, you can find the color worship behind you, David, from Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, what are humans that you are mindful of them and care for them? You've made heaven and earth. You are worthy of our praise. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Amen. So let's sing together hymn number 144. This is my Father's world. Hymn number 144. <laughs> Thank you. 
what do you believe? You can find the Apostles' Creed on page 881 in your hymnals or on those little handout sheets we have at the doors if you'd like, but what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My friends, please be seated. This morning we are not able to have an anthem today. So instead, it's time for our children's message of our youngest folks to like to come forward. That'd be a great thing. Morning, Riley. Morning, Riley. Anybody else need Riley coming up? <laughs> Wonderful. There may be other folks in the um, in the nursery, but they may not be able to hear us after we move the nursery from downstairs to upstairs because we had the sound system downstairs, but not upstairs. In case you wanted to know, or if you didn't want to know, you still now know, you know. <laughs> I love this time of year. Do you know why? There's so many reasons, but part of it is because, yeah, right. It's winter. That's not why I like this time of year. <laughs> I don't know, although thankfully, though, uh, Rick Burke and even more so Dale Boyd were doing all the shoveling today. I didn't have to shovel, so thank you. But for me, uh, winter, it's nice if you're inside, but I don't like the shovel much. I get to, but I don't like the shovel. <coughs> no, it's, you know, it's, it's more because of the options we have for candy. You guys know I like candy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, what I find fascinating is how creative these folks are to make candy. Like, for example, we've got our regular Reese's right here. We have the Reese's eggs that come in this bag right here. For Easter, I guess, right? Not only that, but even at half price, you can get the Reese pink hearts. Well, they're not pink hearts. No, they are pink hearts. <laughs> pink hearts. Who comes up with this? Three different kinds of bags? That one stays the same. Or with peppermint patties. I mean, seriously. We've got your regular peppermint patties that look just like this. You guys just don't find this nearly as fascinating as I do. do you? <laughs> Not that, but we also have here our um, Easter-like ones. See the flowers on there? Aren't they cute? Not to cup tea, no. Or even half-priced Valentine's peppermint patties. Yeah, delicious. Of course, they almost all taste the same, but it's that whole creativity with how they make things. I don't, I don't know why they do it, maybe just so they try to sell more candy, but for whatever reason, the creativity is pretty neat. But it made me think of how, how creative God is. From Genesis chapter 1, it talks a little bit about how creative God is. And so from Genesis 1 verse 29, God said, I'm sorry, let me go back to verse 27. God created humans in his own image, in the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And then God blessed him and said, then be fruitful, increase in number, and fill the earth. I'll skip ahead a little bit. Where it says in verse 31, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And yet, all the stuff that God made, we get to see hints of this morning. Like, Riley, you and Riley have the same name, right? You guys look exactly the same, right? No. Not at all. Anybody look like me? Thank God. <laughs> 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 At least you guys like me or pretend you like me. Or anybody else here look at all of the same way that you do? Anybody like they call it doppelganger? Or you have a twin here? Anybody look the exact same way? Nope. Every single person here looks differently. And even twins look different. Daniel and David were in the youth group I, I led about 15 years ago. Identical twins, and yeah, I could tell the two of them apart. They were identical, but they were still different. Um, 
Do you ever look at how many butterflies there are? Think about it. Who are you? Oh. Yeah, there are zero different kinds of butterflies? Yeah. You're right. Yeah, there, yeah, the butterflies are not here right now in the winter. You're right. But do you ever look at how many different kind of birds are outside at this time of year? Let alone when the spring comes, how many more birds are around. It's incredible just how many different things got created. Every human being looks different, let alone all these other animals that got created looks different. Uh, they say all that stuff. There's some beautiful, wonderful, crazy creativity that God has that is different, or at least a lot more spectacular than different kind of Reese's Cups, which is pretty neat, and they're enjoyable, but how creative God is and what God's made is out of this world. Except it's not out of this world, it's right here. And we get a hint of that when we're reading the Bible about Genesis, where God created it. He made it all. So, if you're ever creative, the neat thing with that is, is you're acting a bit like God. Now, I've got pictures from Elise Riley in my office that she drew. No, that Riley, not that Riley. Why do I say that? Oh, you know, if you ever look at my office, how many different pictures are there? If you walk by the door, sometimes there are pictures. Because some folks, some of our kids in this church have incredible talent. Um, talk about creativity. The neat thing is, is we sort of get to act a little bit like God when we create. Did you know that? You get to resemble. Come on, Connor, come on in. Just in time. We're done. <laughs> God, we're just... We were just talking about how creative God is, that we get to be a little bit like God with how creative we are. Marianne said, thanks be to God, nobody looks like me. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, thank you that you've made us to be creative and how creative you are. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Connor, we also talked about how creative the folks are to sell candy. So, if you guys want, I have here Reese eggs or the heart eggs or the regular Reese cups. If you want some of those, I'm going to put those right here if you like. Or if you'd rather M M M's, good morning. Or peppermint patties, I have those right here. So go ahead and grab a couple. I'd say two. Let's you know, behave ourselves if you like. Or one of each. So Reese's, or if you like one of the peppermint patties, whatever you want. Thanks, guys. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Connor. And by the way, Connor, if you didn't hear, great job with helping clean up Friday night. Uh, friends, what do you want to give God thanks for this morning? What would you like to praise God for who God is? Is there anything we need to be praying for? Marianne. So we're praying for Kate, Renee, and Sam as they attempt to adopt a child in Mexico while they serve as missionaries in Mexico. Okay. Thanks, Renee. Friends, is there anything else we need to be praying for? Surely. I was at the heart doctor Friday, and there's nothing they can do with the blood clot. But watch it, and in time, he's hoping that a pocket will form around it and seal it so that it won't move. So, just go away, and that would be even better, right? <laughs> it ain't going anywhere. <laughs> so let's keep praying for Shirley in the midst of this blood clot residing in her heart, that they're hoping that a pocket will form around it. But we're waiting for that sucker, as Marianne voted for it to disappear. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Shirley. Linda, come. I have birthday this week, and I received cards from Mr. Bill Cosby. Oh, So well done for those of you who send Linda cards. And if you get 30 of them on Tuesday, after that announcement, I'm joking. If you're able, beautiful, but what a gift it is to care for each other. Thanks, Linda. Friends, is there anything else we need to be praying for? You want to thank God for? Kathy? I'd like to for today.
So are you saying, Kathy, be patient? patient showing minuscule growth it's down in the middle. Is that a good way to put it, Marion? Right. Okay. And thanks be to God. All right. And as for, as for what you were saying, Kathy, I normally don't pray for patience because, but, yeah. yeah. Waiting on God can be a very frustrating thing to do. Worthwhile, but frustrating. Friends, is there anything else you want to thank God for? Yes, Denise. be praying for our school kids locally and nationally and globally, especially after the events that happened this week, as well as for our first responders who often are rushing into situations, and whether it's worrying about shootings or folks dealing with drugs, or who knows what situation, how dangerous that can be. Thanks, Denise. Friends, is there anything else? Then why don't we go through the Lord together in prayer? <coughs> Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord, you've set your glory in the heavens, and when I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, what are humans that you're mindful of them and care for them? That abbreviated version of Psalm 8, Father, seemed painfully out of whack this week. Yeah, you care for us, you got us, you love us, we see it in how you answer prayer, whether it's with Finn, with the... the the tumor not spreading it and barely growing. Thanks be to God. We give you thanks. Let alone how you, you bless Linda Carter, so many of us with cards and whatnot from other people. We see your hand at work. And yet, Father, this week has been painful. Watch. Kids, teenagers, minding their own business, some <coughs> in their life, and so many others hurt. We know you're God. We know you love us. We know you care for us. This week has been hard to say that with such clarity and conviction, yet continue to move in us, Father, to see how alive you are. And if it's what struck me on Wednesday, it truly is the truth, then when Jesus saw Lazarus and the family members as he was lying dead in the tomb, and Jesus wept just before he brought, Jesus, brought Lazarus back from the dead, <coughs> that tells me that the shootings cause you incredible pain as well. What are humans that you're mindful of them and care for them? Thank you that you love us because you could be absentee. Thank you that you love us. You could be that landlord who shows up only when the rent's due. And yet you're the God who sent the Spirit into our midst, allowing your Son in the past to move and work in our midst. But Father, we're also asking you to be with the families who are grieving now. Would you be with the families of Alyssa, Alhadef, and Martin Duque and Guiano, Nicholas Dwork, Aaron Feist, Jamie Gutenberg, <coughs> Christopher Hickson, Luke Hoyer, Kara Walran, Gina Montalto, Joaquin Oliver, Elena <coughs> Meadow Pollock, Helena Ramsey, Alex Schachter, Carmen Shentrup, Peter Wang, 
that you, Father, be with the families, let right alone the whole area of Parkland, and my comfort and peace. <coughs> this, Father, we're asking that you would be with Kate and Renee and Sam as they attempt to adopt this little one. Father, well, it's your will. Open up the doors. We ask for this in Jesus' name. We're praying for healing for Shirley. We pray against this blood clot, let alone the other issues Shirley has with her body. We're praying, Father, against the blood clot. And if it's a pocket to form around it, then, Father, we make that pocket grow. And if not, we're praying, Father, that you would remove the blood clot. And we're asking for this in Jesus' name. We come before you, Father, in a world that doesn't always make sense. No, in reality, often it doesn't make sense at all. Realizing that we believe in you, that we have faith in you, even in times when it doesn't make sense. And yet, what are we that you're mindful of us? Well, we see it. You send your spirit into our lives, and you sent your son, Jesus, to enter our midst and to die for our sin and rise from the dead, that we have hope for life eternal. And so, Father, what are we that you're mindful of us? Thanks be to God that you are mindful of us. We thank you and praise you. As we praise Jesus, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our readings this morning come from Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, as well as from Acts chapter 17. Pam's stepping in for um, Robin Atwell today, so Pam, thank you. And also, we ought to be praying for Bob and Peggy. They've been fighting with this um, stuff for at least 10 days, with the flu slash um, Peggy lost her voice and whatnot. Morning, Pam. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Genesis 1, chapter Chapter 1, verse 31. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Acts, chapter 17, verses 24 through 31. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth, and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and boundaries of their lands. God did this so they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. <coughs> Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's stand together, my friends. <laughs> Overcoming 
the weaknesses our own fathers have had, whether they were incredibly, they had incredible shortcomings, or if they were humans like every other person who had fallen short of the glory of God. We touched on the word almighty last week, and yet today we'll get more at that, the part of that thinking of almighty or all ruling as God is to be talked about how God made all things. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. The point of the record in Genesis, and as we heard in Acts chapter 17 this morning, is this. Not how God created per se. What's the most important thing is who created. The scriptures are all about who made it all, not how. But that can be frustrating for us because we want to know exactly how in our scientifically guided world. 2,000, 3,000 plus years ago, when scriptures were written, at least Genesis, they weren't so concerned with the hows. They were concerned with the who. They believed, and I believe, that God the Father Almighty is the maker of heaven and of earth. I believe that God the Father Almighty is the maker of heaven and earth. For some of us, we would think back to Sunday school, and for others of us, we may think about, um, well, a scene in a certain movie that has this musical interlude. So, Caleb, okay, we're ready. We'll see if it works this service. Now, it's the second screen. <laughs> At the very beginning, Kayla, there were two of the same slides. Yeah, we had that much. We had, it worked this well in the first service as well. Aren't you guys just totally bored to death? That's all right. Hey, I have no clue what's going on with that sucker. It's been a headache this morning. We could have done things better, and that's on. We'll move on ahead then. Wow, you just jumped on. Is it being chaotic on you, Kayla? That's got a mind of its own. Snap. All right, I don't know how to fix that, but I'm here. Well, friends, we're going to move on in case you just want to sit here and stare at the screen and then hopefully it makes noise it hasn't made. You don't look like you want to do that, do you? We can try to make things incredibly well at times we will fail. I'm like God. And yet, one of the things that stood out to us a while ago that even some of our kids from Marvelous Mondays and whatnot have taken into school, or maybe you saw in our financial giving letter, um, was this, that there, there's a, there are times where Things just click in spite of yourself. When we talked about from Genesis chapter 1, after God made everything, every day he said it was very good. And after the sixth day of creation, God didn't say it was good. He said it was very good. That was the day he made human beings, which tells us, whether it's those of us who are pushing 90, those of us who are pushing nine months, that I am made in the image of God. I am valuable. I am not junk. Do you remember that from a while ago? Some do, some maybe you don't. But we're going to say it again. If you didn't catch it, guess what? We're going to say it a few times just to get into our heads. I am in the image of God. I am valuable. I'm not junk. All right, for those of you that's the first time you may have heard it or you're just waking up now, we've got one line that's missing up there. I'm in the image of God. I am valuable. I'm not junk. For a world with teen suicide continually, if not growing, it's still at a level that's disgusting and painful to watch. Let alone with the, the statistics indicate men of my age are very are one of the highest at-risk groups for a suicide. My age, mid-40s, because of a, that whole midlife crisis thing that may occur. We've lost sight of the fact that we're made in God's image and that we find our value there first. Not how pretty we are, how good looking we are, how much money we've got in our wallet. I'm made in God's image. Beautiful thing with how God works is that the thing we try to hint at with the children's message as well, about how God has worked within us and as we're made in God's image, or emigo deo, as they would say in Latin, we're made in God's image. And we, we resemble God in different ways, including that creativity. So here's your assignment for worship. If you choose to accept it, if not, I may call you out, but I'm, it's going to be worthwhile. Here's your assignment. Get in groups of four to six. Make something with the Play-Doh. You'll find those nice white bags there at the end of your pews towards the middle aisle. Get into a group of four to six. Don't be mean. Don't go, you know, mean girls if you've ever seen the movie. You know, let folks in. If you have seven, go seven. You may even, you know, if you have a larger group, go ahead and steal two bags of Play-Doh. But work together. Make something. Do it on the plates. 
We don't need to make a mess. The first service did a beautiful job. Are you guys up for this? If not, I'm just going to stand here and look at you. If you haven't played with Play-Doh for a while, please bear with me and enjoy this time. Can you just cut the computer volume or like speaker for a second? I like to see it here, but I don't want it to start exploding on me. I'm in the nine, trying to see how you fit in. I'm glad working here. I'm glad I'm working now, so that's what he had it on. <laughs> Second screen, two screens of our on the second screen. Of the yeah. I don't that one but like that. Well, I made it here. There. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's like it's trying to be it, but it's not able to. Mm -hmm. But it never started playing. The first time I tried it, it started, but I haven't cut off. Well, oh, right. And that was during the I was assuming it was that one, like he said, there's two identical ones, the second one that was the one below that. But it's identical to this one, but it's not back to back with the exact thing. I don't know if it's going to happen. Huh. myself now. All right, my friends, just a couple more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> What's that shirt? Yeah, better switch back to 11. Make something. No, I, I already did. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha. That's why I was trying to replicate it in that voice. Getting it, but like I said, it's like it's trying to get it. Hey, wonderful. Whoa, oh, now the power's on. <laughs> Where did you hear me in the back with the kids? Uh uh. -oh. Yeah. No. Okay. I imagine it's. I know if it works. I think boss prayer is I have my laptop. I've got my laptop. Right. But the one I use specifically for me. Whenever this right, so got no to pressure to up, I go to another one. Wow. You know, We've got a lot of there to spare. Yeah. Yeah. And you try to straighten things up. But the more, the deeper other people go on, the more confused. No! No! <laughs> 
so we can just race everything. All right, you have 30 seconds, 15 seconds, time flies when you're having fun, and right now it flies when you weren't having fun anyhow. Five, four, three, two, one. If you are willing, we'd love for you to bring up your creations up here. As they're making their way forward, if they're willing to share, we have up here, somebody made a bird's nest, somebody made a fruit pie in the first service. I have no clue what the Jelly Tree Giant, or no, that's a tree, sorry. <laughs> we've got a bug, we've got a few crosses, and then two. Wait, I don't think it's too late. Okay. Somebody <laughs> did a water, or water boat, motor boat. I think he was dreaming of the spring. What in the, that is awesome. That's a person with purple hair. Gnarly, long as, okay, cool, why don't you guys know the exact number two? Right, wow, that really is cool. Funky. Ian, I will, smiley face with a star beard? That's awesome, okay. Oh, scout sign, there you go. Thank for the scout sign in the fire. That is cool. It's sort of looks like a dolphin, but hey, whatever. <laughs> That's a neat thing with art, it can be fluid. You don't always know what it is. Wonderful job. That is, that is so neat. And the fun of it is, is most of you have this look on your faces on the side, they're like, he's making us do what? And then on the whole, you have smiles. There's something neat with playing with Play-Doh and the creativity that works within us. Well done. And yet, the, it, our creativity here, some of our, some of our artwork here, we, we may not be too proud of, but some of it we're gushing over because we thought it was so neat. For some of you, you still have that look on your face like, I can't believe he made us do that. But the point was, it's not to make Play-Doh creatures, it was to show a bit of that creativity that God has put into each of us. Each of us has different gifts. Some of us with our mouths. Some of us by raising our hands while the pastor ignores them. Hey, Marianne. Some of, <laughs> some of them. Some of you can draw beautiful things, and my stick figures look like they were sickly whenever I was a kid. Now, all of us have different gifts. Yes, Marianne. I thought it was interesting that I made something, and then someone else made something else out of it that we can be reformed. Ooh. <coughs> Seriously, you're getting way too deep for that topic today. <laughs> but yeah, that's, and if you heard in Acts chapter 17 about the whole point when Paul spoke to the, um, the folks in the Oropagus, which was this weird worship center slash museum for, I'd say, false idols. Um, they have, and at the end of that passage, he talked about how uh, Jesus rising from the dead, pointing to the truth of that, but then rising from the dead points to the fact that we can't be reformed. Thanks, Marianne. Well said. So I hope you enjoyed that, friends, which you're getting at and hinting at modeling who God is. The danger is, as J.I. Packer suggested this as well, where sometimes when we think so much about God or we're God's children, well, sometimes when we get to think about who God is, we try to make God in our own image. The quote Packer has was this, God made us in his image, but we tend to think of God in our image. That's the danger, instead of letting God be God. But that happens with any person we try to get to know or meet or understand. We infer upon them. And the beautiful thing about the deep relationship is the more you get to know someone else, the more they become alive and real. The more we get to know God, the more we can see God in all God's facets. Modern science, on a side note, has suggested that there is a creator when I was growing up, science seemed to be at odds with Christian faith. Those many folks who work in the science world were actually suggesting that it is more and more likely that there is a creator. On page 25 in Creed, Hamilton, not Hamilton, the author, notes this about the Oxford mathematician John Lennox. Lennox has said that the odds for the self-organization of this planet, in other words, this world to come to be about without any outside influence, especially with a creator, is one to the tenth to the forty thousandth power. If you're looking, if that makes your head spin, think of it this way. If you ten, one times ten is of course ten, correct? For those of us who know remember our math. One times ten to the third power is a thousand, because they're dumb like me, three zeros is a thousand. 
You're welcome. A million would have six zeros. A trillion would have nine zeros. The number he's suggesting for the Earth to come about by itself would be one to the number 10 to the 40,000th power, which means there would be 40,000 zeros after that one. There are three after a thousand, six after a million, nine after a trillion. What's that mean? The odds are minuscule that there wouldn't be a creator. That's where most physicists, that's where most folks who look at astrophysics are, are getting to the point where they're owning up to the fact that there had to be a creator. They don't look at it as God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. They don't look at it as that triune God. But they do look at that there is a need for a creator. Now there are some who are still fighting against this. If you saw the um, Bill Nye the Science Guy versus, um, I think it's Ken Ham was his name, fighting creationism versus um, the scientific creation of the world. Some folks still don't want to own that who are in that realm, but from what I was able to read for this morning, many scientists, if not many in that realm, are thinking that there was some sort of force we would call God causing that creation. Many physicists accept and occasionally use the term God, quotation marks, as shorthand for describing the mysterious invisible forces that govern the universe. But Christianity doesn't stop there. We believe our God's personal. Or as it says here in Hamilton's Creed, Christians see God as a being, an entity with all the attributes of personhood, intelligence, emotion, reason, logic, will. God knows, feels, loves, thinks, wills, acts, and creates. In other words, God's personal. Not just out there, some sort of absentee maker of stuff, but personal. As you saw from the 9 o'clock service, most folks made their creations and left them here. A few took their Plato creations home. Mostly they were younger than I am by a good two decades or so. And yet, most folks created and left it alone. That's not how God acted. God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, made sure that we would know that God made us and that God loves us. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. But how did that come about? The difficult, part, the difficult aspect of this is there are at least three different models or theories for how the creation came about. So, if you would bear with me, I'm going to show you the three models. You get to choose for yourself. John Wesley modeled this for me beautifully, which has helped me a lot, in that there are things to fight about as a Christian. There are things that are just, there are aspects that you just can't toss out. For me, Jesus. If you're not going to say he didn't, he didn't die for my sins and rose from the dead, we're done. as far as I can tell from the scriptures, not, you're not that faith based Christian. But there are a lot of things we can disagree on and still look at each other and say, I may disagree with you, but you're my brother, you're my sister. So here are three models for creation, and I would suggest that at least three, these are the three that seem to be most well recognized. You get to choose for yourself. There's a literal day theory, or young earth theory, which means that it was a 24 hour day for every day in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. As it's Advantages. The word for day in Hebrew, yom, we spell that in English to suggest for the Greek or Hebrew word, pardon me, yom would be Y O M. Yom, almost all the time in Hebrew, was a 24 hour period. Most of the time in the Old Testament, that's what it meant. So that makes a lot of sense to suggest that the earth is only less than 10,000 years of age when you do the numbers. That's why they call it the Young Earth Theory, or literal day. There's another, number two up there is the day-age theory, where it suggests that day represents a period of time, including years, not just a 24-hour period. Most of the time, yom, that word in Hebrew for day, is a 24-hour period, but it suggests at times, including in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verses 4 through 7, day is used in that context more as a period of time, or the age that it may have occurred. The suggestion would be is that although the book of Genesis uses the word yom, we would think it was a 24-hour period. It may have been a, lot, a, a much grander, larger period of time, including years, centuries, millennia. Positives and negatives of that. Genesis chapter 1 reads as though it's a 24-hour period. And yom, that word for day, often is 24 hours. When we look at science, and even though there are, there's a you're quite free to question carbon dating, which can at times be manipulated. The models they have for the age of the Earth seem to be much older than what the young Earth 
the model would have. Either one, you were free to believe. The third one here is literary framework, or is allegorical. This is the one that suggests that Genesis chapter 1 is a poetic rendering, describing creation, not in the order um, that we read with each day. If you look at it, day 1 and day 4, day 2 and day 5, day 3 and day 6, they are so similar, it's incredible. The suggestion would be that it was more of a poetic ordering for those days. Difficulties with that, of course, it reads as it's a 24-hour period for Yom, or as a fixed period of time. It doesn't read as allegorically as you may think, or that this model is suggest. <coughs> and yet, Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, describes a different order than Genesis 1 does. You can look that up on your own. That's part of your sign if you choose to accept it. There are three options here, friends. Let me give you some of the most beautiful words I've ever heard on trying to describe something that's difficult to understand or I don't have absolute answers for. Are you ready? It's a three-word answer, which sometimes this has an apostrophe T in it. It could be four. Are you ready for this? Do I absolutely know exactly which way it is? Here's my answer if somebody asks me that. Ready? Are you set? This is earth-shattering stuff. I don't know. Bam. There you go. Wonderful. How in the world has somehow got the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three persons and one person at the same time? I don't know. My brain cannot get that around its fuzzy little nodules. I don't even know if my brain's a fuzzy nodules, but mine probably does. I don't know. Here's what I found. For me, when I was growing up, it was number one. The more I've looked at it, I, it went to the day, age, or the, the word for young, could be ages. Sometimes I'm an allegorical guy. I bounce around. Do I know for sure? Here's my answer. I don't know. This is one of those things that is important, but is it faith shattering? I hope not for you. I don't know where each of us stands. You get to believe for yourself. Because the point of Genesis chapter 1 isn't about how it was done. It's who made heaven and earth. Every single day, it talks about who made every day. That's the point of Genesis 1. It's not about how it was put together, it was who. It was also written Genesis three to 4,000 years ago, before we had modern science, and before we were fixated upon exact 24-hour periods or exact time of day. They didn't have watches. Watches the night was a roundabout number when we read about it in the Bible. Instead, it's getting into the ballpark. For them, it would be that time period was a lot more fluid than what we would have now. What matters is who made it, not how. Brother Guy, or Guy, I'm not sure how you say it, Con Solomon Magno, director of the Vatican Observatory, said this to a religious news service interviewer. It's important to realize that scripture is really clear only about one thing when it comes to creation, that God did it. We read from Acts chapter 17 this morning, because okay, Acts chapter 17 is a beautiful passage in the scriptures, where there you have the Apostle Paul shows up in the Oropagus, if I'm saying it correctly, which was this strange, wonderful place where they had this worship temple slash museum, all different kind of idols, to the point that the folks who put this together, the Romans were so specific about who they would worship, they didn't offend any gods out there, just in case the god that they missed out on was the real god that was really out there, might get them. So they had every image of a god they could find. This was all-inclusive, including the one pedestal, one spot they had for the unknown god. We pretend our pedestal right here is a spot for the unknown god. No image there, just a little placard. This is the spot for the unknown god. <laughs> they didn't want to make any mistakes, so they made sure they had the spot for the god they didn't know about. The Apostle Paul rolls in there in Acts chapter 17 and says, I know who your unknown God is. And what they did smartly is they didn't make an image, they didn't do anything along those lines. But they hadn't tried to find out who this God was that Paul was talking about. Paul walked in there and he said, I know the unknown God. He made all things. He made us in his image. That God made us in his image that we might want to seek God out. He's made himself clear to us in his son, Jesus Christ. This unknown God created everything. 
And although Paul didn't say it overtly, he is covertly saying, every idol in this place isn't real compared to this unknown God, the one that Jesus came after. Let me rephrase it, the one that Jesus represents. If you read through the rest of Acts chapter 17, what's incredible is very few people listen to the message. It may be one of the best sermon that's written in the Bible. And yet few people responded. They were, their heads were so full of information, knowledge, and learning that they didn't have a heart for faith. I mean, that's part of the issue that folks in the science fields also have. Since I was an engineering in college, I'll, I'll at least go down that route to say that sometimes we get our heads so full of info we don't have room for faith. And God holds out hope that because Jesus rose from the dead, that folks may want to know the unknown God. This unknown God that we believe in, even if we can't see. This unknown God who has made it clear to those who have an eye to see, like you can read about it in Romans chapter 1, that all people might know this unknown God has made himself known in Jesus Christ. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Not because it always makes sense. Because the world's messy quite a bit. I believe because I got to know Jesus Christ. I believe because the scriptures indicate that God made heaven and earth. I don't know exactly how. I have my ideas and only, they, like I said, bounce between the second and third option between day, age, and earth. The literary framework. Free. Apply. Because it's not about how, it's about who. Friends, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. It doesn't always make sense. But the point of the scriptures isn't about the exact details and how everything was created, it was in who. But I encourage you seek out what you find to be true. So here's your assignment for this week if you choose to accept it. One, go to a growth group. Two, reread Acts chapter 17. I'm encouraging you to read verses 24 to 31, or the context there is a little bit larger, as they know in the growth groups. Um, I believe it's Acts 17, 17 through verse 33. But it's a lot <coughs> ahead. Reread it again as Paul speaks to folks who are learned and who are almost anti-Christian. And then also, I'd say reread Genesis chapter 1, and even if you want to see those passages about chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, about how one in chapter 1 and chapter 2 describe the order differently, go for it. Friends, this shouldn't shake the faith. If anything, our faith is faith. It is not concrete. But then, we have faith in a God who still is unknowable in so many regards. If the scriptures are true about what it says about who God is in comparison to who we are, finite, small, short-lived, our lives are but our lives are as long as survive as long as the grass lives on earth is what the psalm suggests. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised that God's difficult to understand. The beautiful thing is that the God who made all things desires for us to know God. That's a gift. So, my friends, the question would always still be as we leave here today, what do you believe? I know this. As difficult as it is at times to understand, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Amen and amen. If you would, would you pray with me? You can find the prayer on the screen behind me, but I'm encouraging you instead to close your eyes, put up your hands toward heaven as we talk with God, and repeat after me as we pray. <clears throat> Lord God, loving Father, Lord God, I love you. I love you. How majestic is your name? How majestic is your name? How beautiful is your creation? How beautiful is your creation? How incredible are the people you've made? How incredible are the people you've made? I praise you, wonderful Creator. I praise you, wonderful Creator. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, let's continue to worship the Lord through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. <coughs>
Thank you. 